linear thinkers. So let us proceed to a fifth tutorial in which I will be teaching you the decision structures, also called the conditional statements. In this tutorial, we'll learn the if statement, the I if statement, the select case, and the applications of all the above. We will continue with the sample program of the previous tutorial, that is, the calculator. In real life, we take many decisions. Some are unconditional, some are uniconditional, some are biconditional, and most of them are multiconditional. A uniconditional statement is like, if light is red, then stop the car. A biconditional statement is like, if light is red and police is nearby, then stop the car. A multiconditional statement is like, if artist is JB, then click next. If it's Eminem, then turn up the volume. If it's Taylor, then turn the volume down. And if it's Avril, then turn repeat on. Sometimes we have to choose one from two. And that one we have to choose depending upon the condition. I mean, if a condition satisfy, then do this. Else, do that. Like if the orange juice is available, then take orange juice. Else, do the do. In this case, we don't have any other condition or any other case. If one condition is satisfied, then we will do the first case. Else, we will do the other. In Visual Basic, we have several types of condition structures or decision structures. The first one and the most common one is if and if. The other is if, else, and if. The next is if, else, if, else, if, else, and if. The next one is I if. And the last one is select case. The syntax of the first decision structure is if condition then statements and if. If the condition satisfies then the visual basic compiles the statements written inside the if and and if. Else visual basic just skip all these three lines and move to the next line of code. The syntax of the second structure is if condition then statements else statements and if. In this case Visual Basic check if the condition is satisfied or not. If the condition is satisfied then Visual Basic compiles the statements written between if and else. If the condition is not satisfied then Visual Basic compiles the statements written under else and and if and it does not compile the statements above it. The I if statement is a great replacement for if else and if if the number of statements written under the satisfy condition and the dissatisfy condition is just one. The syntax of the I if statement is visible as soon as you type IIF and then apply the parenthesis. The select case structure and the if else if and if structure are somewhat similar except the fact that select case is mostly used when we have just one condition to check and then compare the values of that condition. For example, if we have to predict the grade of a student then we will use select case instead of the if else if and if. The syntax of the select case statement is this select case space expression. The expression will return a value. Then case value and the statements you want to compile if the case value is satisfied. Then case another value, then statements. Then case else that is optional. And the statements written under it. Case else will be executed only if all the other cases are dissatisfied. And then and select. The syntax for the if else if and if command is this. If condition then statements, else if condition then statements, else if condition then statements and finally the optional else and then its statements and then and if. Let me tell you about the one line if. The one line if does not have an and if at its end and it is written obviously in just one line. If 
condition then statement by statement i mean that there will be only one statement another modification of one line if is if condition then statement else statement finally let us discuss about the nesting the ifs can be nested nesting means that if in another if for example if i write if condition then statements if condition to then statements and if and if here this if is nested in the outer if we can nest up to infinite amount and it's good if we just indent it a little bit to visualize that it is nested in the outer if now let us proceed to the debugging procedure of our previous sample program. First we will solve it using a simple if. Here the symbol greater than less than means that it is not equal to. If num2 is not equal to 0 then only proceed to the next step. Else skip this step and move to further steps. We can convert the same in a one line if using a backspace. But this is not actually what we need. We need to throw an error as well if the user divides by zero and for that we will write if num2 is not equal to zero then perform this step as well as this step. Else write result is equal to admissions open for learners and then we'll write end if now let us restart the program and check for bugs as you see the result label display that admissions are open for learners because we know that a number cannot be divided by zero and what if we change the number then it displays the actual result we can do the same thing using the select case statement we'll write select case num2 then we'll write case 0 and then this statement then we will write case else then this statement and then the end select sorry this statement will be under this and now we will sample on the program again admissions open for learners and if we divide by 2 S28. We cannot achieve the same result using the if statement because the if statement is a one line statement and Visual Basic compiles line by line. Means Visual Basic will encounter this error even if the condition is dissatisfied. Well, we can try. For that, we'll write result is equal to i if brackets num2 is equal to 0 then admissions open for learners else string of num1 by num2 and brackets close we will delete all this area and then rerun If we divide 56 by 2, that will display the actual result. But if we divide it by 0, that will display the error division by 0. Because it is a one line statement and Visual Basic need to compile this complete line before proceeding to the next line. Even if the condition is dissatisfied, Visual Basic compiles it once but does not execute it. And that error is a compile time error that will appear as a runtime error.
This tutorial was more theoretical than practical and so will be the next one, that is the looping structures or the iteration constructs, so stay tuned.